Andy, Andy, come on, let's go. Wait a minute, what's going on here? It's the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> Welcome to the Amos and Andy Show with their guest tonight, Cecil B. DeMille, brought to you by the makers of Rinso. The annual masquerade at the lodge last week was such a success financially that the boys decided to follow it up with a beauty contest under the sponsorship of the lodge. Amos, Andy, the Kingfish, and Fred Gwindell are in Andy's office discussing it now. Yeah, Fred, we're going to hold a big beauty contest with the lodge in back of us. Yeah, and as the contest manager, I can say that we're going to make a lot of money on it, too. Uh. Well, now, that sounds good, but ain't it a little soon after the masquerade? Oh, uh, look, at the masquerade last week, we done took in $125, and that shows that the members has got a lot of money. Yeah, after all, Fred, the time to milk a cow is when she got milk, you know. <laughs> Uh, you see, the way we're going to work this beauty contest is to have the gals pay an entry fee of $2 and then send in photographs of themselves. Uh, Andy and Mr. Van Porter is going to be the judges. Yeah, that's right. I already got a lot of the pictures here. Uh, say, Andy, how did they happen to pick you for one of the judges? Well, what's wrong with that? For 30 years, women's has been my specialty. <laughs> Yeah, Fred, when we was using Andy, we using skilled labor. <laughs> uh, is you uh, got the rules of the contest worked out yet? Uh, Andy, you said you was going to work out a set of rules. Yeah, well, I finished them up this morning. Good. Yeah, I got them right here. I'll read them to you. Yeah. Rules of beauty contest. Rule one, you got to be a woman. <laughs> Rule two, you got to be a woman with $2. Oh, yeah, that's the entry fee. Yeah. Rule three, you got to weigh less than 184 pounds and be under 38 years old. Uh, less than 184 and under 38. Yeah, that's to keep out Madam Queen and the Kingfisher's wife. <laughs> well, you know, we got to draw the line someplace. Uh, has you fellas decided on a prize for the winner yet? Oh, sure. We're going to give her a beautiful silver loving cup with her name scribed on it. Uh, yeah, we got it over at Honest Joe's pawn shop. Uh, we got it second-handed. It had a little scribing already on it there. Uh, yeah, but we is adding something to it and kind of fixing it up. Yeah, uh, how'd that work out? How's it going to read again, Andy? Uh, yeah, I got it written down right here. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Harlem Beauty Queen of 1944 and... Pocket Billiard Champion of Jersey City, 1912. Uh, come in, Mr. Wiseman. Come in. What can I do for you? Well, Kingfish, my daughter Thelma's entered in this beauty contest you're running here, and I'd like to make sure she wins it. Well, now, look, Mr. Wiseman, whoever's the most beautiful gal is going to be the winner. That's all there is to it. Well, I'll lay my cards on the table, Kingfish. Andy Brown's going to be one of the judges, ain't he? Mm, that's right. Now, you is a good friend of his. He could swing this whole contest. The Kingfish, if my daughter wins, I'll, I'll give $50. 25 for you and 25 for Andy Brown. Mr. Washington, is I to understand that you was trying to bribe us? I want you to know here and now that this contest is on the level, and the thought of bribery is repulsive to me. Well... <laughs> If you ain't interested, I guess I'll be running along. Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, don't go. Come here, wait, wait just a minute, Joe. Now, uh, uh, just cause I is against bribery, ain't no reason we can't sit down and just kind of talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's that to talk about? Well, I was just wondering here that uh, if your daughter was to win the contest without no bribery revolve, would you still be willing to hand out 50 bucks as kind of a... Token of uh, your joy and happiness. Well, look, if my daughter wins a contest, I'll pay you $50. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't want to up your joy and happiness to 75 would you, Dad? <laughs> no, $50 is my top. Yeah, well, uh, I'm just asking you, Dad. Uh, tell me, uh, what kind of looking gal is your daughter? Has you ever seen my wife? Oh, sure, yeah, seen her many times. Well... They say that Thelma's the spitting image of a mother. Hmm, 
I see your problem there, yeah. <laughs> Trying to bring in a long shot, huh? <laughs> well, put it any way you want, but Thelma's in this thing, and her mother told me to see that she wins it. Well, now listen. Everybody got the same chance to win. And if Thelma wins it, it ain't going to be because of the $50 we is getting because bribery is out. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, uh, how soon after the contest does we get to 50? <laughs> I tell you, Amos, I'm getting dizzy looking at the pictures of all these gals in the contest. Tell me this, is they pretty or is I getting old? <laughs> well, there's some pretty gals here. Now, look at this picture here. Now, there's a pretty gal as you ever want to see, Andy. Oh, yeah. Bernice Fletcher, huh? Now, there's something else. I happen to know that gal, and she ain't got no long eyelashes like that. They is the fake kind that you paste on. You get them over at Barton's Drugstore. Yeah, well, she got nice long hair, though, ain't she? Oh, listen, she ain't got no long hair like that, neither. You get that at Barton's Drugstore, too. Yeah, well, uh, she'll make her look pretty, all right. Yeah, but the only thing is, when it comes to voting, it's a question whether to vote for the gal or the drugstore. <laughs> yeah, look at this next one here. I don't think she's going to win. Yeah, let's see who she is. Oh, yeah, that's uh, George Washington's daughter, Thelma. Amos, I wonder if somebody sent this picture in as a joke. Well, I guess every woman thinks she's pretty in her own mind, Andy. Yeah, well, she got a looking glass, ain't she? I show pity the fellow that marries her. With him, every night is going to be Halloween. <laughs> yeah, well, now, uh, let's see what's next here. Yeah. Well, hello there, boys. How is you? Hello, Kingfish. Uh, hiya, Kingfish. Uh, say, Amos, I don't like to be unpolite, but I'd like to talk to Andy Confidential under his hat, if you don't mind, it's reporting. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I got to go anyway. Well, so long, fellas. So long, son. Goodbye, Amos. What you want to see me about, Kingfish? Uh, brother Andy, look here. I just been approached by a man that's got a daughter in the contest. Now he is willing to give me and you twenty-five dollars a piece if his daughter win the contest. Mm. Now he's wait a minute. Now wait a minute. This contest is on the level. There ain't gonna be no bribery stuff. What you talking about? Of course there ain't gonna be no bribery, Andy. We ain't supposed to be influenced one way or the other by his money. But just in case his daughter do win, we guess it just as a token of his joy and happiness. Oh well, that's different. <laughs> Say, uh, what's her daughter's name, anyway? Uh, Thelma Washington. Oh, her. Well, it looked like her papa's gonna save some money. Uh, is you got her picture there? Right here. Here she is, right here, see? Uh-oh. The end of the trail. <laughs> Kingfish, ain't there no other papas that might want to give a $50 token of their joy and happiness? Now, wait a minute, Anna. Let's not be hasty about this. You know there's different types of beauty. Yeah, well, she is definitely a different different type, all right. Uh, look at the bumps on her nose. Oh, now look, Andy, like I say, there's different types of beauty. After all, take the Rocky Mountains. They got bumps on them, but they're beautiful just the same, you know. Yeah, I know, but uh, the Rocky Mountains ain't got ears like that. Mm, yeah, it is pretty big, ain't it? But on the other hand, Andy, uh, look at them eyes there. Oh, yeah. They got the same look in them that a papa had when he said he's going to give us $25 a piece if she won. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, when you get right down to it, she is the most beautiful gal I done ever see. Uh, you know, I, I, I tell you what to do, and uh, being that uh, Henry Van Porter is the other judge, uh, why don't you send all these pictures over to him? Then we'll drop over to see him a little later in the afternoon. Yeah, we got to make sure that... When Henry sees the picture of Thelma, he don't make the same mistake that we made when we first looked at it. Well, Henry, do you understand the proposition? Yes, Mr. Snow. In other words, if your daughter Henrietta wins the beauty contest, you will take out a $10,000 life insurance policy with me. That's right. Yes, well, I think I understand. And I might add that your daughter has a very good chance of winning the contest. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Uh, by the way, Mr. Snow, uh, when will you take out this policy? The day after the contest. I get it. Goodbye, Mr. Snow. Hmm. Henrietta Snow. Let me look through this stack of pictures here. 
Come in. Oh, hi, Henry. Hi. Well, hello there, Henry. How is it? Hello, boys. Sit down. I'm glad you dropped in. There's something that just come up that I want to speak to you about. Yeah, something we want to speak to you about, too. Yeah, you know, Henry, about this contest, uh, there's a lot of different ways to judge beauty. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, tell me, Henry, is you ever see the Rocky Mountains? Well, uh, I see pictures of them. Yeah, and uh, even more beautiful if they had ears. <laughs> Uh, you got them pictures I sent up here, didn't you, Henry? Yes, and so far, the most beautiful girl in the contest is unquestionably Henrietta Snow. Oh, now, wait a minute. Uh, what does she look like? Well, I... Uh, uh, let me look through these pictures here. We'll soon find out. Yeah, well, when you come to the picture of Thelma Washington, haul that out, too. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's Thelma Washington's picture right there. Yeah, now, as you look at this picture of Thelma, Henry, uh, just kind of look at a little of a face at a time. In other words, I, I don't want you to sour yourself on it before you sort of get the hang of it. You see? <laughs> here, uh, here it is right here, Henry. Oh, my goodness. Is you gentlemen serious? <laughs> I, I told you to look at it slow, Henry, and not bite off more than you could chew. <laughs> yeah, Henry, this gal's beauty is a different kind of beauty. Well, as a judge in this contest, I can tell you right now that I will never vote for Miss Washington. Up till now, it looks like Miss Snow is obviously the winner. Uh, Henry, now, don't jump to no conclusions. My vote is going to Thelma Washington. Gentlemen, it looks like we are in a deadlock. <laughs> Well, no amount of argument has succeeded in breaking the deadlock between the, do the two judges of the beauty contest, Andy and Henry Van Porter. With the big affair at which the winner will be announced only two days off, the situation is a bit confused. Andy, Amos, the Kingfish, and Henry Van Porter are in the office discussing it now. You know, I've been thinking the thing over, fellas, and really, I think the only way to solve the thing is to get a third judge to pick the winner. Mm. Amos, that ain't a bad idea. Now, in thinking of people that would make a good judge, I got somebody that people believe in, that sound as the rock of Gibraltar, a man that's full of integrity, a man that's fair and square from the word go. Uh, who is it? Uh, who is it? Ha, ha, ha. It's me. <laughs> not on your life, Kingfish. I will not stand for it. Well, I had a thought about who the third judge could be. You might think it's kind of reaching for the moon, but there's a chance. Uh, what is that, Amos? Well, it just so happened that Ruby's got a friend by the name of Amelia that cooks for Mr. Cecil B. DeMille, the big Hollywood and moving picture director, and he happens to be in New York for a while. Oh, yeah. I was here to him. Yeah. Didn't he direct that big picture... Oh, uh, reap gone with the wild wind and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, his cook is coming up to our house tonight. And I was thinking that we might speak to her and see if she would ask Mr. DeMille if he would be kind enough to be one of our judges. Yes, the name DeMille in connection with our beauty contest would certainly lend class. Yeah. And I'm sure it would help the ticket sale, which ain't been too promising. Uh, tell you what you do, Amos. That's a good idea. Have your wife's friend, Amelia, speak to Mr. DeMille and see if uh, she can arrange an appointment for me and Andy. We'll go up to see him and explain the whole thing to him, say, tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in the morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. DeMille. Good morning, Hardrick. By the way, Mr. DeMille, I've been over the mail. There's nothing of any importance. Now, that's fortunate because I've got a script to read. Oh, I did get a telephone call from Gary Cooper. He wants to know the release dates on his picture, The Story of Dr. Wassell. Well, tell Gary it'll be early in June. And Hardwick, call off all appointments for today. Uh, yes, Mr. DeMille. Oh, there's just one appointment. Uh, Hardwick, please. I don't want to be interrupted today. It's just that the cook wants to see you. The cook? Good Lord, why have you kept her waiting? <laughs> 
Is she is she complaining or anything? Oh, apparently not. She didn't say what it was. Well, give her a raise anyway. <laughs> but, Mr. DeMille, that's the third raise you've given her this week. Yes. Do you think it's enough? <laughs> yes, I rather think so. You know, Mr. DeMille, I haven't gotten a raise in over a year. Can you cook? <laughs> I'll bring her in. Oh, Amelia, Mr. DeMille, we'll see you now. Right in this way, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. DeMille, these are the gentlemen I spoke to you about at breakfast this morning. Huh? Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. I, I had forgotten for a moment. Uh, uh, this is Mr. George Kingfee Stevens, and this is Mr. Brown. Uh, hello, Mr. DeMille. Oh, uh, yeah, sir. How is you? Just in from Hollywood, huh? Oh, I've been here for a little while. Yeah. Uh, tell me, how is everything back in the Cinnamon City? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 orchards to your last picture and all that stuff. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you, thank you. I understand you boys are running a beauty contest, and you want me to be one of the judges. Oh, uh, yeah, sir, that's right. Well, I appreciate the honor, but I'm just so busy that I don't think I'll quite have time for it. Why, it would be nice if you'd do it, Mr. DeMille. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I, I'd be happy to do it. Yeah, I'd be happy. Well, now, as long as that's settled, I'll get back to the kitchen, and you gentlemen can talk everything over. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Amelia. Yeah. Now, just, uh, just what is it that's expected of me in this contest? Oh, uh, well, sir, you see, you would be one of the three judges, Mr. DeMille. Yeah, so you see, we are going to work the thing on a point system in judging the different gals' pictures. Well, that's certainly a fair enough way. Yeah, so now, we start off by giving five points for beauty. And then we give five points for personality in the face. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I see. Uh, then we give 25 points for the novelty of the face, you see. <laughs> you know, if it's uh, out of the general run, if it's different. And then we give 50 points for vigor and 75 points for ruggedness. You know? <laughs> perhaps I... Perhaps I misunderstand. Is this going to be a beauty contest or something on the order of the Golden Gloves? <laughs> Oh, uh, no, uh, this is going to be a beauty contest, all right. Uh, it's just that we is approaching the thing from a new angle. Well, it's uh, certainly broad in its scope. Any contest with a scoring system such as this could be won by either Hedy Lamar or Boris Karloff. <laughs> yeah, well, now, uh, here's the pictures of the gals that's going to be in the contest up to now, Mr. DeMille. Thank you. I'd like to look at them. Uh, you wear glasses, don't you, Mr. DeMille? You want me to get them for you? No, I don't think I need them. Uh, now, this picture on top here is the gal that we favor. Uh, uh, this is Miss Thelma Washington. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, perhaps I'd better have my glasses. <laughs> you know, uh, eyes play funny tricks sometimes when you don't have your glasses on. Well, yeah. Here you is. Here's your glasses, Mr. DeMille. Thank you. Now, let me look at this picture again. Uh, no, it wasn't my eyes. <laughs> Yeah, so I wouldn't use no snap judgment on Thelma Watson here, Mr. DeMille. Beauty all depends on how you look at it. Well, let me look at some of these other pictures you have here. Say, this one's very attractive. What's her name? Uh, Henrietta Snow. Well, matter of fact, uh, that's the gal that the other judge, Mr. Van Porter, is kind of leaning to. Uh, well, with only five points for beauty, she may be severely handicapped. Yeah. <laughs> She, she seems to lack the novelty and ruggedness of Thelma Washington. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she certainly is pretty, though. Yeah, yeah the, she fairly pretty, all right, but in sort of an out-of-date way, you see. Now, look at them dimples there. Why, dimples went out with button shoes. <laughs> yeah, that's right, they did. Well, as I understand it, Mr. Van Porter believes that a beautiful girl ought to be beautiful. Yeah, crazy man. Huh. <laughs> Mr. Brown, on the other hand, seems to favor the type of face that uh, requires a lot of explaining. Yeah. yeah, well, anyway, that's the whole situation, Mr. DeMille. It, it looked like Henry Van Porter is going to vote for Miss Snow, and Mr. Brown here is in Thelma Washington's corner. Now, use your own conscience, uh, but uh, kind of uh, use these two votes to guide it. And then the night after tomorrow, you get up on the platform at the large hall, and your vote is the one that counts. You announces the winner from the platform. Oh, yes, sir. And your cook, Amelia, will show you where the lodge hall is. Yes, and oh, by the way, Mr. DeMille, uh, 
I think you ought to know that Thelma Washington's papa is a very generous man. And if his daughter should win, there might be a five spot in it for you. <laughs> well, it was sure nice of you to come up to our lodge tonight, Mr. Mill, and meet our committee and do this for us. Oh, that's all right. I'm very happy to do it. Yes, uh, sure was lucky that we know Amelia so she could ask you about it. Well, there's very little I wouldn't do for Amelia. Oh, Hardwick. Uh, yes, Mr. DeMille. Uh, remind me to give Amelia another raise when we get home. Yes. <laughs> well, there is Mr. DeMille. Uh, it won't be long now. Matter of fact, they're going out on the stage now and start to make your introduction speech. Uh, then you gets up there and announces who the winner is. Mm, and I present the cup. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, by the way, uh, one thing. Uh, 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 pardon yes. me, Amos. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, you know Mr. DeMille. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know. Thelma Washington. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Don't forget about the fire spot. Uh, well, uh, I'll get on out on the stage now and start introducing you. Oh, boy, that sure is a lot of excitement around here tonight, Mr. DeMille. Yes, yeah, this is a big night for everybody. Oh, Mr. DeMille, I've been looking all over for you. How are you, Mr. Van Porter? Uh, pardon me, Amos. Uh, Mr. DeMille, there's just one thing. I'm in the insurance business. Mm, yes, yes, I, I know, I know. Henrietta Snow. Yes, yes, yeah. and remember that... Excuse me, Mr. DeMille. Would you please come out on the platform now? Yes, coming out. Well, good luck to you, Mr. DeMille. And so it gives me great pleasure and pride to welcome our extinguished guest, Mr. <laughs> Cecil B. DeMille. Uh, Mr. DeMille, as final judge in the contest, will announce the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Well, thank you, thank you. I know you're not here to listen to any speeches. You all want to know who is the winner of this contest. So I'll get right to the point. After judging carefully all the contestants, I found it very difficult to make a decision because there are so many whose beauty certainly entitles them to a prize. However... I'm only allowed to choose one. Therefore, I hereby award the title of Harlem's Beauty Queen to Miss Mildred Forrest. Who is she? Hey, well, how in the world could he have picked her? Gentlemen, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Oh, wait a minute. Here come Mr. DeMille now. I think he's through signing them order giraffes over there. Yeah. I can't understand it, Kingfish. Mildred Forrest. She's even worse looking than Thelma. Henry had a snow ought to have been the winner. Oh, what you talking about, Henry? Thelma Washington ought to have got the thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Mr. DeMille, excuse me, sir. Uh, can we see you over here, please, sir? Uh, what is it, boys? Yes, uh, Mr. DeMille, we are shocked by your decision. That's what we are. Yes, I don't understand it at all. Uh, tell me this. How'd you happen to pick Mildred for us, Mr. DeMille? It's this way, boys. You other two judges had your reasons for picking Henrietta Snow and Thelma Washington. You, Mr. Van Porter... I know that selling insurance is uppermost in your mind. And you, Mr. Brown, I guess the almighty dollar is every bit as important to you. Well, I had a reason for voting the way I did. You know, there's one thing in this world which a person cherishes and wants to keep. A thing which today we value even more than money. And which we'll do anything to protect. It was for such a reason that I voted for Mildred Forrest. Yeah, well, uh, what is the reason, Mr. DeMille? She happens to be the daughter of my cook. <laughs> 